Hello friends and neighbors, this is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. This week we are excited to have our mission festival, our annual mission festival, and so our our readings for this week are going to be uh, selected readings for the mission festival. Uh, And we're excited to welcome uh, Pastor Greg Bai, who's going to tell us about uh, what's going on in Indonesia, and we'll get to uh, see a presentation about that. Our appointed readings for this week, though, I didn't want you to miss out on the appointed reading for for this coming Sunday, uh, particularly the gospel. And so I thought I'd bring a message to you as we dive into God's word uh, from Matthew chapter 21. This is the appointed gospel reading for this coming Sunday. And we're picking up right where we left off last week. Jesus told a parable about the the two sons. Right after that, Jesus tells another parable. Keep in mind, we are near the end of the gospel of Matthew. In fact, these words of Jesus that he speaks, Matthew 21, the beginning of the chapter is uh, Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It also tells about how Jesus cleansed the temple. That happened on Monday. And so these words are probably spoken by Jesus on Tuesday of Holy Week. Jesus is less than 72 hours from being arrested and put on the cross, crucified, to die for the sins of the world. As Jesus is nearing that, uh, that passion, that suffering that he would endure for us, he confronts the religious leaders of that day who had... Uh, who had turned away from God's word, who were pointing people away from God's grace and mercy, but rather were, were seeking to serve themselves, who were uh, more interested in lining their own pockets, who were more interested in gaining power and influence for themselves. And, and that was a big part of the contention with Jesus. But Jesus in this parable confronts those false teachers in Jerusalem. And so he tells a parable. He says in Matthew 21, verse 33, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. He leased it out to some tenant farmers and went away on a journey. When the time approached to harvest the fruit, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. The tenant farmers seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then the landowner sent even more servants than the first time. The tenant farmers treated them the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenant farmers saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. They took him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. So when the landowner comes, what will he do to those tenant farmers? They told him he will bring those wretches to a wretched end, then he will lease out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his fruit when it is due. The parable that Jesus tells, I think he's, he's telling this parable against the religious leadership, really against the people of Israel and how they had treated God's prophets that they had sent, that God had sent to them. At the time of Ahab, for example, Elijah was on the run and a, and all, a lot of the other prophets were being persecuted and put to death. Or we might think of how Jeremiah 
when God sent Jeremiah to warn the people of Jerusalem about the coming destruction of Jerusalem, that they might turn away from their sin and turn to God for forgiveness, what did they do? They mistreated Jeremiah, threw him into prison at at different times. Uh, God's prophets were often mistreated and not received as his representatives, his servants. And more recently, for uh, the people at Jesus' time, you had John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who had been beheaded. His message had not been accepted or received by the religious leadership in Jerusalem. But what about the son? The landowner in the parable sends his son. And of course, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the one that God sent into the world. Jesus is being prophetic. Jesus knows full well what would happen in 72 hours, in three days, how Jesus himself would be hanging on a cross to die in fulfillment of scriptures. And as a result of the rejection of the leadership, the religious leadership in Jerusalem, the chief priests, the high priest, the elders were rejecting Jesus and would put him to death. What I think is really fascinating is uh, in, the, in the parable, what the, the farmers say, they say, this is the heir, come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. Now that's pretty bad logic. That's pretty bad thinking to, to assume that if they would kill the son of the landowner, that they somehow would be able to inherit the land, the vineyard for themselves, that, that they, by killing the son, would gain something. And of course, the landowner would not allow that. The landowner would come with, with uh, vengeance against them and would drive them out of his vineyard. He would bring those wretches to a wretched end, and rightly so. But that they wanted to claim the inheritance for themselves. And the prophetic thing about this is that we, through Jesus' death, do become heirs of heaven. That through Jesus and because of his sacrifice on the cross, those who trusted in him, who listened to him, who repent of their sins and turn to Jesus for forgiveness, God gives to us the inheritance of Jesus Christ. God brings us into his family so that we become heirs of eternal life. We become heirs of heaven. All that that Jesus uh, earned, deserved, that, that Jesus was rightly his, his inheritance of his heavenly Father, all of it becomes yours and mine, that we will be heirs of eternal life in heaven through Jesus Christ. But that is given to us. It's not something that we can... Uh, earn for ourselves. It's not something that we can grab and take for ourselves. And that was the problem. The, uh, the elders, like those, those farmers, were trying to earn heaven for themselves through work righteousness. They thought if they could do it on their own, they didn't repent of their sins, but they tried to claim uh, heaven for themselves by their own works, which eventually led them to reject Jesus No, it's through Jesus that we have eternal life, not by us putting him to death, but God sacrificing his son for us, willingly to make you and me sons, daughters, children of the Heavenly Father, heirs of eternal life through Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Redeemed, restored, forgiven Through Jesus' precious blood Heirs of his home in heaven
Oh, praise our pardoning God. Praise Him in tuneful measures who gave His Son to die. Praise Him whose sevenfold treasures enrich and sanctify. Now keep us, Holy Savior, in your true love and fear, and grant us by your favor the grace to persevere. Till in your new creation our earthly troubles o'er, heirs of your free salvation, we praise you evermore.